Hi there, crafty friends. Rose Greenwald here and stamping with you from my stamping studio in rustic country, fabulous New Holstein, Wisconsin. Thank you for joining me today. I'm super excited for this video tutorial. I'm stamping and hopping along with the Stamper's Dozen for our blog hop this month. Our theme is Sweet Summer Time. And one of the things that I think is really neat about summertime is a little thing called Christmas in July. And so that is the project I have for you today. A unique card that looks sweet and simple on the outside, but really wows when you open it up on the inside. I can't wait for you to see it. And I will teach you how you can make this really intricate and complex looking card very simply right at home. I love to show you how simple card making can be and I hope that you can follow along with me. Now if this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. I'm super happy to have you here. And if you're returning, welcome also. Thanks for joining again. If you love crafty tutorials, I have a lot of them. So you should just take a minute and hit that subscribe button. I think it's going to be in this corner maybe. <laughs> so that you can have all of my videos in one handy place and reference them anytime you want some inspiration or tutorials for some simple, stunning stamping. <clears throat> okay, are you ready to see our project? I'm super excited to show you. Okay, so like I said, this card, let me get some more light going here. For those of you who follow my videos, you know I don't do any editing, mostly. Sometimes I will if there's some sort of issue, but um, all right, I'm all set here. <clears throat> we are making this beautiful Christmas card to celebrate a little Christmas in July. And again, the outside is simple but stunning, but the inside, that's what really wows. Check this out. Isn't this absolutely beautiful and amazing? I'm going to show you how to make this, and I promise you, you can make this at home. There is nothing too complex about it. So let's get to stamping now. We are featuring the Tidings and Trimmings bundle today, and I've got uh, the stamp set and coordinating dies here. I've got these already pulled off because we're going to use these right away. So there's a couple of big stars in here, small intricate and um, smaller kind of outline of a star, some stockings that coordinate with these stocking punches, um, some sprigs of leaves and holly berry sprigs, of course some beautiful sentiments, a pretty bow. There's 18 stamps in the stamp set and it includes a little two from stamp so you can definitely make tags out of this stamp set as well. And I've been having a lot of fun playing around with this bundle. In fact, I am featuring this in my class to go this month. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at some of the cards that we are featuring in the class to go. They're absolutely stunning. I made this one in my Make It Monday Live this week and really excited. That's just a few of them. With this class to go, you will get to make 16 cards all delivered to your door. And it includes, of course, some pretty products. The Evening Evergreen Chevron Weave Ribbon, which is absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And one of my favorites, super fun texture to do some mixed uh, product layering. You get a full pack of the Holiday Rhinestones in your class to go, and a half a pack of the Pretty Tidings of Christmas Designer Series paper. So I've got one of each of the patterns here that I'm showing you. This paper um, is full of pretty kind of muted, I think is a good way to put it, uh, almost chalky colors. Of course, this paper is two-sided. So it really makes for wonderful, kind of rustic, country crafty Christmas looking cards. Now for the card that we're making today, uh, we are also using one of our banners here from the Stitch So Sweetly dies. We are using this <coughs> second largest one from the curved pieces and I've already die cap cut that so let me just show you what that's going to look like. 
out of a piece of soft succulent. And I've got a number of pieces cut already today. So if you want to prepare your pieces, you can do that. What I have is um, a half a sheet of Sahara sand cardstock. We're going to use that for the inside of our card. We've got a half a sheet of evening evergreen cardstock. This will be our card base. And then we've got this really pretty pine cones and holly berries and like pine branches um, with the soft succulent name color. This is going to be for our card front. The size of this is four inches by five and a quarter. And this will also be for our card front. And this one is three and a quarter inches by four and a half inches. So I've already got those cut. I'm also using, um, you might remember these brushed metallic sheets. These are from last year's catalog and they are carrying over into this year's holiday mini catalog or otherwise known as the August to December mini catalog. And I'm using this kind of goldish one. This is a piece that I just cut for die cutting that's three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And we're going to bling up our envelope today too. So I've got just another scrap that I had kind of laying around of the trimmings of Christmas paper. Now the first thing I did was I die cut all the pieces that I'm going to be using. Um, and so these in our die pieces, these holly leaves, actually cut two individual leaves so you can cut four at a time if you want on your die cutting machine and that's exactly what I did so we've got four total holly leaves we've got one of these berry sprigs and I did that in cherry cobbler and then so here's that berry sprig and then these leaves right here this leaf guy that's what I used to cut these leaf sprigs which I did in soft succulent so I like to get some of my die cutting kind of out of the way first. And we've got more pieces to cut. A couple of these stars in the star outline. I'm going to show you how I did that right now. So I'm getting my cutting plate ready here. And in comes my brushed metallic paper. What I'm going to do here is use this large outline die from our die set. And then this detailed, almost string art looking star is a little bit smaller and I'm going to center that right in the middle there. Now I am using an old uh, retired magnetic platform from my last uh, die cutting machine. Get out my big boss here. But you absolutely could use masking tape or painter's tape. Um, to keep those pieces in place. I know Stampin' Up! is working on uh, perfecting their new magnetic platform. I just kept this old one. Now, I just want to note that I went through like three or four times on this one. That's because this new platform isn't quite exactly perfect. It works fine for the um, die cutting machine, but I really wanted to make sure I had a good image. Solid image die cut. Okay, now I'm going to get my cutting plate out of the way so we can do a little bit of cleanup work here on our die cut pieces. Now, this would absolutely be useful for something, so I'm going to just set this aside. <clears throat> and we've taken off the large die, and what you're left with here is this pretty outline of a star. We need two of those. So I actually already have cut one ahead of time, so I've got two of those. And then the detailed intricate star, we need two of those and I have one cut through the same method. Um, now this looks like, uh oh, it's stuck in there. So I like to throw it on my tabletop and that piece comes out really nicely. Now I am going for a country look and I think for like a country, shabby chic, kind of crafty, rustic country Christmas look, it is okay if we don't have all of these pieces cut out. In fact, on purpose, I'm leaving some of these little die cut pieces 
in place. I really, I don't want it to look absolutely perfect, perfect. And I did the same with the other one. It would be super easy for me to poke those through, but I don't want to. That's the look I'm going for. All right. I'm just tossing all these little pieces aside. Okay, so now we're going to work on the inside of our card first. I've got a half a sheet of Sahara sand here. So this right now is five and a half by eight and a half inches. I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of each side. So it's going to end up at five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And I'm just going to line this up with a quarter inch and cut it off. Okay, now we need to do a little scoring. So I'm scoring this in half, and half of eight and a quarter is four and an eighth. So I'm going to find that four and an eighth mark. And I'm going to score it here. I think that should be right. Well, I don't need to really score it in the middle, but we're going to. Oops. And then I'm going to score at not quite the middle, two and a quarter in from each end. So I'm going to line up the two and a quarter on the outside and then flip it over and do the same. Line up my two and a quarter. Just like that. So you've got three total score lines on your page. Now I'm going to get out my bone folder here and burnish these edges. And what we're looking for is a W. So the middle one comes out, and the outside ones fold in. So after you've got this nice and burnished, you end up with a piece that looks like this. All right. So now. We need to cut out our little window panel that's in the center of our Sahara sand piece, and we are going to do that with, whoops, let me grab it here. We're going to do that with our string art star, and I'll show you why in a minute, why we're not using the larger star. So here's how we're going to do this. We are going to get out our sheet and we are going to line up our score line right with the tip point, the, whoops, let me move this a little bit closer into view here, with the tip of our star and then this little notch in the bottom part of our star. So that's how we're lining it up. And then we're going to die cut. So running this through my big boss. I am just going to go through this twice just because I want that outline to be good and cut. There we go. And so we've got our star cut out. <clears throat> All right. Now, of course, you've just die cut a pretty um, Sahara sand kind of intricate star. And there we go. I am going to save this for another project. Just doing a little bit of cleanup. And what I like to do when I've got these extra die cut pieces is just toss them into my die cutting envelopes. So that's a little 
storage tip for you. All right. Okay, now we are ready to go and we're going to do some stamping and I want to do that first just in case I make a little mistake. I don't want to uh, have spent a whole bunch of time gluing my pieces if I make an error. So we've got two sentiments that we're using on the inside. Um, I'm using May Your Days Be Merry and Bright and actually the reason I picked these is for the size for how they're going to fit into these panels. And then this next one says, wishing you a joyful Christmas and happy new year. So I'm going to get my evening evergreen out here. And I'm stamping this longer sentiment down here near the bottom. Like that. And then I'm going to grab my cherry cobbler. And these are the coordinating colors to the cardstock that I'm using for the die cut pieces. That's the wonderful thing about Stamping Up is how everything coordinates so well. And if you are looking for beautiful, high quality products, color coordinated, there's a whole bunch of them in my online store. There is a website right at the bottom here of my page, right down here, where you can shop, you can check out all the online classes I have, and more. Okay, so I've got May Your Days Be Merry and Bright up here, and then Wishing You a Joyful Christmas and Happy New Year. And I don't want this to be too naked, so we're just going to boost this a little bit with some of these small stars. One is a solid star and one is open. And I'm going to do a little tone on tone stamping here. I'm just going to kind of come across just random with these stars. And then I'll do the same with the outline. So there is no rhyme or reason to these. Oh, you might be able to hear my doggy outside. He wants to come in. <laughs> John was outside with him. And they like to hang out in the sunshine and he's had enough for the day. So you might be able to hear him in the background. All right. So I just added a little extra kind of inky texture with these pretty little tiny stars. All right, next we are going to get to our focal point of the center here, which is this beautiful window that's going to have this pop-up scene come out when you open it up. So the first thing we're going to do is really make this pop by adding a little bit of glitz and glam here to it. I'm going to take this outline and glue it right here on the inside of this star. Now this is pretty intricate gluing here, so I don't want glue all over my <coughs> work surface. I, for this, am using our Tombow liquid glue. It's got a nice tip that I can just kind of spread this glue on the back side. Like this. Now on my uh, sample card, I did this piece last on the inside and that was not good. So don't make that same mistake. You definitely want to do this piece first. This is really hard to tuck it in around the other pieces. Just lining this up. Like so, and of course I got a little bit of glue on my work surface anyway because I had just a little bit too much. No worries, I've got a baby wipe here. I always keep these handy for cleaning off my work surface. And a little 
extra glue. So you can see that's right perfect around the edge because I can't see it on the other side. Just like that. Doesn't that make it pop already? Just that bright brushed metallic um, look. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is a little bit of piecing with some of these die cut layers. And um, I hope that this is dry already. I'm just going to fold this first because each of these we've placed, we're going to just make sure that they aren't jutting out over the edges of our, as we place our pieces, we're going to tuck them in here and I'm going to fold this closed each time to make sure that they don't spit out among beyond the edges of this inside layer. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of these sprigs. And I want one on each side. So as you can see, I'm going to kind of tuck that in there. And when I flip it over, I can kind of see where it needs to be. So I find glue dots work really, really great for this. I just come into my glue dot and grab a piece and then you can place and you can even kind of angle and move around a little bit just like so. And then we'll do our other side. Uh, and this is, I mentioned it earlier, but just a reminder, this is a die cut out of a piece of soft succulent cardstock. It's one of our in colors this year. I really love our in colors. There we go. So now we've got these two sprigs and as you close it, you can see they are not jutting out beyond the edge of our inside layer. And I want just a pop of red. I don't know that I want it super symmetrical. So I think I'm going to put this pop of red here on the left, which will be this one. And this sprig is just a little too long, so no big deal. I just trim it off with my snips. And then we're going to do the same with our glue dot. So I like to pick up that glue dot with my die cut piece. And then I just place it in here. Where I want it to go. And then, of course, you can kind of angle and adjust it however you want it. And here I am closing just to make sure that we are not going over the edge and we are good to go. Okay, next I've got some of these smaller, these are going to be a little bit harder to place, holly leaves. Got a hair sticking on me. <clears throat> Gonna do the same. We are just going to pick up a piece or a glue dot with our die cut piece, and we're just going to tuck in like so. And we always have two holly leaves together, so I'm going to try my best to tuck in that next layer right by the first one. And the good thing about this is that I can just adjust these pieces. Now I need, now I've got my glue dots kind of all up in there. There we go. Just 
just like that. So I've got some holly berries and holly leaves going on there. The other side will be a little easier because we don't have that extra sprig to work around. I'm going to do this harder side first before I get it all stuffed in there. And then come in with my last piece. Just like this. There we go. So here we have, oops, my holly sprig. I'm going to just turn this in here a little bit like that. There, it was. Now it's folding good, just like that. Okay, so we have got our inside layer totally assembled. Now we just need to glue it down. So let's grab our hard base. For this card, I definitely like to kind of do the inside first. So that if I make any errors, I haven't already kind of wasted a card front piece. So we're going to open this up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to glue these flaps on the inside. But glue is only going to go here and here because I want the center part to pop up like this when I open the card. And it's not going to lay flat. It's going to stay popped up. In fact, you could set it up on a mantle just like this, kind of show off the pretty scene that we just built. Now, I'm going to use for this gluing down my Stamp and Seal Plus because with the opening and closing, I want to have a really good, strong adhesive. So I'm actually going to do both sides right away because once it's glued in there it's a little harder to get the adhesive set and you absolutely for cards like this really want to invest in a high quality adhesive and I just love the tape runner stamp and seal plus and the stamp and seal I love all the adhesive that stampin up offers I have found I do not have any issues with my adhesive not sticking. Okay, so now once I have my left side placed, I'm going to kind of spring up that outer edge and place the right side of my card, just like this. So it isn't going to lay flat. We don't want it to lay flat. So here we've got our inside. And it closes like so. I always like to take that bone folder and just kind of do my best to kind of smush this down. Now for my card front layer, I'm going to be careful not to do too many dimensionals because it's already a little bit thicker than a regular card putting into an envelope. So now when our recipient opens, they're going to see this beautiful pop-up scene card. Now I wanted to bring this metallic and I felt this was a little bit naked here. So I thought it would be fun to glue our intricate stars on the side. So let me show you how I did this because these are not super easy to glue. And as you can see, I've got some smudges of glue on the silicone craft sheet. Now let me tell you why I love this craft sheet. Look at what happens. See these smudges of glue? All I'm doing is rolling that off. Look at how nice it comes off. And it comes off totally clean. And you have a totally clean craft sheet again. And then this little glue debris you can just throw away. This is why I love, love, love this craft sheet. Okay, so we are going to do some gluing on both of these pretty stars. So I'm just grabbing some glue, putting a little splotch of it on here. 
And then I've got a piece of the Stampin' Sponge with like a binder clip. I cut it up into a wedge. And then I just grab the glue with my sponge and sponge it on. I always go, I want to make sure with these particular ones that I am going right to the outside so that my points will glue down nicely. Okay. We're going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll do the same with our other star here. And I can pick up some of the glue that went through to the other side when I go to glue this next one sponge the glue on. Okay. Glue up my fingers, of course. This one I want off a little bit further. So glue that down. And I know they're sticking out over the edge. No worries. We will clean that up. So let me get this out of the way. Now, okay. Once we have this glued down and we feel it's secure, I just flip this over and trim anything that's sticking out beyond the edge. Do that same thing here. Just gonna line my snips up with the edge of my card front and trim. That baby wipe's coming in handy because I have glue on my fingers. All right, so the inside of our card is done now. Of course, you could do more stamping if you want to, no big deal, but I'm going to call it done. Isn't that beautiful? And now we need to get to working on the outside of our card. I am going to just set the stamp set on here to keep it down for now. All right, the inside of this card is going to be sweet and simple. So we're just gluing down our layers. I'm using the Stampin' Seal for this, my favorite adhesive, for just regular old gluing. Doing our best to center that up. And here we've got the outline of our star again. I'm going to grab this craft sheet so that I don't dribble glue everywhere. And I'm just uh oh, there we go. Placing some liquid glue. Got a little much, so I'm just grabbing it with my tip and spreading it to other areas of the card. I'm actually not putting it down on the craft sheet because it's still sticky from my sponging. So um, having two of these craft sheets might be really helpful if you're going to do some of that sponging and stuff so that you can use your other one right away. Okay, I'm just going to center this as best I can here. That looks pretty good. All right. And next we need a bow because I do not almost never leave my cards without a bow. And I want to go with kind of that same rustic country feel of this paper. So I've got some, um, and I didn't want something too bulky because of how the inside of our card's going to be. So I'm going with this um, Baker's, or not Baker's twine, uh, linen thread. It's got a nice neutral color to it, thin, it ties really, really nice. Love this stuff. I always have linen thread on hand. So I just wrap that around twice and I'm going to tie this in a bow. 
And um, my tip for those of you who are new, I tell this every time I tie one of these bows, and I'm using a thin ribbon-like linen thread or baker's twine. I always tie it in a knot first so that I don't have to kind of worry about holding it down with my finger. And then once it's tied in a knot, I know it's going to be nice and secure. Then I come in and tie the rest of my bow. And I can do that super easily without having to worry about my ribbon loosening up and having to redo my bow. It's just um, so much easier. Okay, then I just tug on the ends until my um, loops of my bow are the length I want them and trim off the ends of our linen thread. Now this ribbon curls a little bit if you want to, so I sometimes will take my bone folder like this and just kind of curl those ends a little. And I don't have this right in the center. I actually have it a little bit lower on the card. And we're going to adhere this now on our card front. So it's going to go in the center just like that. So grabbing my stamp and seal. And whenever I've got a bow like this, I always like to do a line of adhesive right near the ribbon. That way I know that it's kind of grabbing the paper in that place. Okay, we're going to center this on here. And glue down. Just like that. Okay, and now for just a little more stamping for our sentiment layer. I've got that Stitch So Sweetly. Again, this is out of Soft Succulent. I'm going to grab my Evening Evergreen and my Soft Succulent ink pads. And we're going to do our sentiment. I picked It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. And again, I actually picked it because it fits really nicely in this die cut label. So stamp that in the center. And I always like to add a little bit more kind of inky subtlety or texture, if you will. So I've got, there are a couple of leaves here and here in our stamp set. So I am going to stamp in soft succulent. We'll stamp off to lighten the color. And I'm just going to come in here with those. And then I'll clean this off and switch or add cleaning this off off camera on my chamois. Okay, and then I'm going to come in and grab the three leaves. And again, stamp off. I just want that a little bit lighter. And let's come in right here, just like that. Okay, grab some dimensionals. I'm getting to my edges. So let's just cut a few of those. I still have a little bit of glue on my fingers, so all these pieces are sticking to me. All right, and then we are going to pop this up right on our card front. Um, 
center that there. And of course, we would want to use our rhinestones, especially if you get my class to go. Um, I find that these, I think these are pool party rhinestones, but they actually really match with the soft succulent. So I'm just going to put a couple of these on here. This one down here by our bow. Like that for a little bling. And my card is done. Can you believe that? That was actually pretty easy, huh? So our card's finished. And here we have our pretty inside that really wows when you open it up. And our sweet and simple outside. Of course, this would make a gorgeous card as is, but why not add the wow factor, right? All right. Thank you so much for joining me for my video tutorial day. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. You can find uh, my online store, some online classes, and more inspiration from me on my blog. The web address is right down here at the bottom, www.rosegrunewald.com. I so appreciate you, and thanks again for stopping by. I will be stamping with you soon. Bye!